yesterday the news broke that the New England Patriots have finally decided to make a move on this Matthew Judon front. It has been a few months now, it feels like, of contract negotiations between the Patriots and the star edge rusher, and they have not been making a whole lot of progress for a while now. Judon been holding out of practices and now he is officially on his way out of New England and on his way to Atlanta where the Falcons traded for him to try and help bolster their roster that they feel like may be ready to compete in the NFC which is pretty wide open. The exchange was just a third round pick from Atlanta to New England so a pretty small price to pay for the Falcons. Now, obviously, the price tag is the big conversation with Judon because even, you know, some people have concerns with Judon coming off of a torn bicep injury that forced him to miss almost the entire 2023 season. I happen to think that this was, that was a little bit of a freak injury and that it shouldn't be something that really bogs down his play in 2024 but it's definitely something to consider he just turned 32 years old and once you start getting into that age range injuries do your body just starts to fail you to some degree so a little bit of a concern there but doesn't sound like the Falcons necessarily have any plans to immediately pay him. A little bit surprising, especially what's going on right now with the Bryce Huff situation with the New York Jets. For context, the Jets traded for, or, or Hassan Reddick, I mean, um, where the Jets traded for Reddick in March. Didn't work out a contract extension, and Reddick has been holding out since then and has since requested a trade. So, to see a team make a similar move with no real intentions to extend him just yet while all of that is going on is pretty interesting, but... I would have to imagine that there has to be some sort of mutual understanding between Judon and Atlanta for him to sign off and not just a change of scenery for him to continue to do the same thing holding out, but that he will play for Atlanta. And I think that he's still a positive impact player, especially when you look at the Falcons. They were sort of, when you look back to the NFL draft, they were just heavily mocked to have their pick of Whoever they wanted for the first edge rusher, there was a pretty clear need that they needed to ramp up the pressure that they could apply to opposing quarterbacks. They obviously instead go with Michael Penix Jr. and what was a surprise pick with that eighth overall selection. So, you know, definitely a, a polarizing move there. I'm not on high, as high on it as I think that other people have sort of talked themselves into, but it left them without an edge rusher that now they're able to pick up with a third round pick. Matthew Judon is way better than whatever edge rusher you could have gotten, at least in terms of immediate impact in, in comparison to whoever they would have picked in the first round this year. So again, long-term solution. Not there. We'll see what happens. Atlanta is already a pretty expensive roster. They actually had to restructure a contract with their Pro Bowl guard Chris Lindstrom to even be able to make this deal happen and stay under the salary cap. So, you know, the Falcons are going to be an expensive team moving forward. I kind of doubt that they are going to work out some sort of contract extension, Atlanta and Matt Judon, but we'll see. Definitely can be open-minded here. I do think that their defense definitely got better with Judon, and for whatever it's worth as well, I do like their second-round pick from this year's draft, Rook Aurororo of Clemson. I think that he can be a really nice you know, run stopper slash can get you a little bit of production in the pass rush from a nose tackle position. So that, I think that the Falcons, they're in a wide open division and overall a pretty wide open conference. Now, I am definitely not putting them in Super Bowl contention conversations at this point. I think that people might be getting a little bit ahead of the, themselves in terms of that, but 
I mean, if Kirk Cousins can produce at a high level, there's a lot of talent on that offensive side of the ball. Raheem Morris, their new head coach, I think that he has a very bright future as a coach in the NFL. We saw what he's been able to do on that defensive side of the ball. And, you know, they have a decent number of playmakers now. You look in their secondary. Jesse Bates is one of the best safeties in football. A.J. Terrell, a pretty solid cornerback one. Outside of that, secondary isn't exactly their strongest you know, point of a uh, point of attack, but they got some guys in that front seven as well that can be difference makers. So the Falcons should be very much in contention. Probably should be the favorite in their division, in my opinion. And then you know, who knows what happens once we get to the playoffs? Again, the NFC is very open. So. I think that they have pretty solid chances and you know I don't think that this is necessarily a needle mover in terms of this deal acquiring Judon but it definitely helps a lot and it does fill a hole that the Falcons had headed into this season as it is and all it cost them was a third round pick so overall a pretty good deal for the Falcons on the Patriots side of this it's a little more complicated, I feel like, because the objective fact is that the Patriots are not close to being a Super Bowl, even a playoff contending team. The offense is still such a mess. And at this point, you know, they have a number of talented defenders on their defense. So I think that, you know, if you are trying to argue that the Patriots... They can be, if their offense is even slightly below average, they could work themselves into more wins than expected because I do feel like their defense has the potential to be a top 10 unit in the league this upcoming year. Now, losing Judon definitely hurts that sentiment, and that is sort of where things get complicated because, again, you look at the overall timeline that the Patriots are currently on, and they're not winning anything anytime soon. And we've seen them in the past. I know that during the prime Bill Belichick years, it was always selling guys off early for extra compensation. Feel like feels like a little bit in recent years, the Pats have sort of been on the other side of that where they've allowed some of these players that they knew they weren't going to re-sign. I think specifically the past few seasons, Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson and J.C. Jackson obviously flamed out in L.A., but there's a reason he got the contract that he did when he signed with the Chargers that offseason is because he was a real asset at that point. And the Patriots recently have been too conservative on just having them stick around for some middling seasons and then them walking in free agency for nothing. So I can understand the Patriots actually cashing out this time. You only got a third round pick for it though. And at least where I'm at with Judon, I think Judon can still be a plus player. The fact that he does have the one year left on his contract means that his value isn't sky high, but I feel like if Judon gives you good production in the beginning of the year, you could have at least gotten this third round pick and your team would have been better for it at least with the time that he's on the roster. So I have, especially as a Patriots fan, a little bit of conflicting feelings here because, yes, I understand that, again, you want to take advantage, you don't want your asset to leave for nothing, but it's just, it's also, it's so frustrating because they don't pay anybody and, you know, in New England, we've been talking about cap space for years now and the Patriots are yet to really act on it other than an act of 2021, which I believe is the year that they brought in Judon, and he ended up being a great signing for them. Ultimately, was a bargain of a deal. Four years, $54 million at the time, so he was definitely underpaid coming into these last couple years of his contract, turning into an all-pro type player. And now... It's just you see the best player for the Patriots over these past few years. He ends up getting traded for a third round pick. And it just feels like sort of a slap in the face that yeah, that's all they got. But at the same time, 
mentioned all of the red flags with Judon and why his market wouldn't have ever been a first round pick, probably not a second round pick. And you're trading your best round your your best player on the roster for not all that significant compensation. So it's like, yeah, you got something, but there's a good chance that it turns into nothing, and that's just how bad the Patriots roster is currently, that their best player, all it's going to get you is a third-round pick. So Patriots are clearly a long ways away from where they need to be in terms of winning games, so they're just getting sort of putting that to rest. It's been very noisy with Judon, especially since training camp started, but he seemed like he wanted to stick around as well, and the Patriots not going out and spending that money on a new contract definitely does just feel like it's kind of the state of where the Patriots are at, where, you know, there isn't really a clear timeline in front of Patriots fans. It's that Drake may hopefully will be the franchise, but who's even going to be on the team by the time that Drake May is firing and the Patriots are good once again? Because there are just so many holes that they need to fill. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Definitely, again, nice move for the Falcons to be able and go to get their edge rusher. Patriots, they're in the rebuild. So, let me know what your thoughts are. We are now going to be sticking in the AFC East with the Patriots division rival in the Buffalo Bills because just this morning we got news that their number one linebacker, maybe number one defensive player on the roster as a whole, Matt Milano, just tore his bicep as we talk about Judon as well. Milano has torn his bicep and he is expected to be out, he is being listed as being ruled out indefinitely. So we'll talk about what that means for the Bills and just sort of the culmination of different losses to this Bills team that can be a little bit of a red flag. So we're going to be diving into that. But first, a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 